Okay, I wanted to do another quick video just kind of talking about one of the issues that I've seen a lot of people have in Power Automate, um, specifically working with SharePoint and the SharePoint Get Items action. And it's important to note that I'm referring to the Get Items plural action, which is used to get one or more items from a SharePoint list uh, versus the, share, the, the Get Item singular action which is used to retrieve one particular item um, and this is an action that get items is often used when you want to you know cycle through a set of uh, items in the list maybe you have a, a list where there's a status column and you want to get all of the items where the status is pending so that you can send a reminder email or do you know perform some other kind of update um, so this is one used, I've used quite a bit myself and I see a lot of other people using it. And one of the problems that people run into it is when they have a list with a, a large number of items, and I, when I say large, I mean hundreds or thousands of items, um, and they use this action to kind of cycle through all of those things, uh, because by default, when you you know have this pointed to a SharePoint site, which we use for our leave requests and the leave requests list, um, looking through the the standard options or the standard fields here are to limit entries to a folder and include nested items, and we're not using folders there, so I'm not worried about those. But when you look at the advanced options, we have the ability to filter the results, uh, specify an order. There's a top count and it says the total number of entries to retrieve default equals all. So you would imagine that it's going to bring all of your list items to you. It's going to return all of the items in that list. Uh, and then another option to limit columns by view, which just basically can be used to, to sub uh, specify a particular view of the list and only return the columns in that view. It can be uh, if you have a column or a list with a lot of columns, more than, you know, a, a dozen or two columns, then this can be really helpful in limiting the amount of data being brought into the flow and making it run a little more efficiently. Uh, but I'm just going to leave this blank as is. And just for reference, that leave requests list in my SharePoint site has 3,634. Let me just refresh to see if any more... No, 3,634. 3, All right, so I'm going to test this flow. I'm going to manually run it. And it's just doing a connection there and should, there we go, run that flow. And when it runs, so I know I have 3,600 plus items in that list. But when I look at my get items, well, I don't actually know how many items are being returned. So this is the first tip that I'm going to give you, which I, I, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've probably mentioned it before. Um, whenever you're doing, uh, performing this get items action, uh, it's good to know how many items you're getting back. If for no other reason than to understand why the rest of your flow might not work the way you expect it to. Uh, in other words, if you're expecting it to get 300 items and it's only getting 100 uh, then there could be a problem or it could cascade into other problems in your flow so one of the things I like to do is I throw in a compose step here and compose is sort of the Swiss Army knife of uh, actions in Power Automate you can do a lot of different things with it but in this case uh, I'm going to throw in an expression here and use the length expression, which the description tells me returns the number of elements in an array or string. And in this case, I'm going to get the list of items from that get items action. Now you'll see body and value and both of them have the description of list of items, but for this purpose you need to, the body is essentially the the object that's in that's being returned uh, versus the value is the actual list of the things being returned. It's kind of an odd, peculiar distinction, but that's how I think of it. 
So we'll save that and let me run that flow again once it finishes saving. Test that, run it manually, and run. And this time we will see, or be able to see, by looking at that compose action, that we are getting 100 items back. But I've got 3,600 in that list. And that property, the, the top count said the fault was all, which should be all of them. Well, the reality is that um, that get items action will actually return according to Microsoft's own documentation the default item limit is 100 items and items are paginated by default as well um, basically what this documentation is saying is that you will be able or you by default unless you specify another limit it will return 100 items from the list or library so I'll include the link to this in the video description. So how do we fix that? Well in this case I know that I've, I know how many items I'm retrieving um, and just to pad that a bit because I know this list is going to grow I can let's say I want to allow up to 5,000 items and hit save and now when I run this again I'll do another manual run and look at the compose action and we'll see that it returned 3,634 which is the number of items in that list. So basically if you are using get items in your flows and you're having trouble with the flow not doing what you expect it to do or what you want it to do there's a good chance that it's simply not returning the number of items that you want to get out of that list now another important factor is the uh, as i mentioned there's this this article talks about what those limits are and how to adjust them um, and there's also a setting of pagination, um, which is an advanced setting for the get items action. So if I jump over here and I edit this flow and I go to the settings for this action, you'll see there is this pagination option. And the description here is a little confusing. Retrieve items to meet the specified threshold by following the continuation token due to a connector's page size, the number returned may exceed the threshold. Um, basically, this is a way of sort of not bypassing, but cooperating with the API limits. So if we take a look at the SharePoint connector, uh, and I look specifically at the throttling limits, we'll see that we have a limit of 600 API calls per 60 seconds. Now, in our case, because we're basically, it's it's considered one API call to retrieve those items, so it's one call within 60 seconds, but if you were using this uh, action inside of, say, an apply to each loop where you're applying it over five or ten different lists or five or ten different document libraries, um, you may want to set this pagination value or set this to on and then set a threshold of, again, the maximum number of items you expect to return uh, so that it will essentially keep trying, keep renewing. And if, what it means is if, if you hit that API limit, so if you've sent 600 requests uh, within 60 seconds, it will you know, the default behavior with pagination turned off would be to simply give up and, and continue running the rest of the flow. But if with pagination on, it will continue to retrieve those items. So essentially tell it to just hang in there and keep pulling items from that uh, through that API connection. Uh, so that's something that you might want to 
as sort of a general rule of thumb, I would typically, uh, in most of my flows, whenever I set that top count, I set the pagination to on and threshold to the same value. It may not actually do anything. It may not make a difference, but I know it's never caused me any problems. Um, so for me, that's that's kind of a small uh, token of, or small indication that it's not a bad thing to do. So, and again, in our case, we're already retrieving the right number of, of items, so I don't, that pagination setting is not gonna make a difference. Uh, one other thing to know is that when you use this get items action you may get a message a warning uh, in the flow checker uh, in this case it is not warning me I'm not sure why guess because it did before and then maybe it knows that I ignored it and it's giving up um, or actually if I leave this empty and save that there we go so basically if you leave it empty again this is kind of backwards because the default is 100, so it's only going to retrieve 100 items. Um, but it will throw this warning, at least momentarily through a warning, that uh, essentially if you leave all of this empty, there we go, just took a moment. Um, updating action, get items to use an OData filter can improve the performance of your flow. So essentially, it, what it's saying is whenever you use this get items action, it's a good idea to not just bring everything into the, the flow. So if you have a list or a library with 10,000 items or 10,000 documents, um, could you bring them all into the flow with the right combination of settings? Yes, um, but you generally want to, you know, to optimize the performance of your flow you'll want to use a filter query there to control what actually gets brought in. So in, in our case, you know, I might want to only bring in those items, those um, leave requests that are rejected or are approved or are pending so that I can basically see how many things are sitting out there waiting to be dealt with. Um, and this I won't go into the filter query language here. It is a little complicated, but there are a lot of other great videos on that uh, out there. So those are basically the 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 top count and that pagination issue are, are the two things that I see a lot of people kind of forgetting about or not using properly in their Power Automate flow. So hopefully, if you use SharePoint and that get items action, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, Please leave a comment. Let me know if, if these kinds of videos are good, helpful, or not really that useful to you. Uh, either way, happy to help. Thanks and have a great day.